uh, this video goes out to uh, my fellow Texans and I recognize that uh, this is a state that is in particular love with uh, President Trump but the picture you see in front of you is border Republican congressman and ex-CIA agent Will Hurd and he's one of the few out there that's willing to tell the truth about the, the wall and what it will do to the state of Texas. The majority of the Republicans in the state uh, basically are sticking their tail between their legs, uh, sticking their head in the sand, and they won't tell you uh, the truth, and obviously they won't push back against uh, President Trump and what a border wall and obviously a trade wall war will do to the state of Texas. But uh, here's a story that basically lays it out for you. Texas Republicans won't tell Trump he's cratering the state's economy. The Texas economy is totally dependent on trade with Mexico. Trump's determination to stir up his flash mob by insulting Mexico is going to absolutely kill us. But our top Texas elected officials are Republicans who are so afraid of far right challengers, eh, white supremacists for the most part, that they can't do anything but cringe and whimper. Like I said, we're screwed. A study published last year by the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank found that since NAFTA went into effect in 1994, Texas trade with Mexico has grown twice as fast as the national rate. The study found that jobs in low value added industries like garments were lost initially along the border, but now overall employment and wages are up in the main border cities. Border cities went on to gain far more employment than what they lost amid increased imports from Canada and Mexico and shifting production between the countries. Moreover, the unemployment rate went down in major Texas border cities following NAFTA implementation. Trump has this thing about car makers manufacturing cars in Mexico and importing them back into the U.S. If he had read this report, he would know that different parts and portions of the manufacturing process fly back and forth across the border like ducks during hunting season. These so-called intermediate products may be produced here assembled in Mexico, then re-imported and sold here. The bottom line for Texas is that 40% of the state's exports go to Mexico in an extremely diverse menu of products and services. The lion's share, over a quarter of the total, is in computers and technology, followed by vehicles, followed by oil and coal, followed by chemicals. Just about everybody with a couple of IQ points to rub together who looks at our relationship with Mexico says a full-scale trade war would tank the Texas economy. So what are our elected leaders doing to stave that off? What could they do? They could tell Trump no. They could tell him emphatically that his proposal for a border tax is a recipe for absolute economic disaster and his idea for a full-scale continuous wall on the southern border is terrible on sheer physical and logistical grounds alone before you even get to the trade war. What, as only one example of why Victor Manjarez, retired Border Patrol Chief and Project Director at the Center for Law and Human Behavior at the University of Texas at El Paso, told the Austin American Statesman this week that merely getting out into remote areas of the border in order to carry out construction of a concrete wall would require cutting and building paved construction roads that would then provide smugglers with easy access to areas that are now physically impassable. There is the fact that a concrete wall is a dam, and a continuous dam along the Rio Grande is a disastrously bad idea because of the flooding and property destruction it would cause. By the way, based on our own experience here in Dallas with the Trinity River, I don't even get how a concrete wall could be built along the Rio Grande absent 
a multi-years long process of study and review by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the Army Corps of Engineers, and the Federal Highway Authority. Well, we know at least uh, two out of the three are in the tank for Trump, that being uh, the U.S. the Enviro Environmental Protection Agency that Trump's going to get his guy in there who wants to basically destroy it, and the Army Corps of Engineers that rolled over for Trump uh, in uh, green lighting uh, the uh, Dakota Access Pipeline and another uh, major pipeline. So we know absolutely that they're in a the tank for them. Uh, as far as the Federal Highway Authority, uh, honestly, I'm not sure if, if they're all the way in a tank for them, but uh, I couldn't see why not. That would fall, obviously fall under the Department of Transportation, and um, Elaine Chow just uh, got uh, sworn in to uh, head that department. Anyway, so let's say he just does it anyway, like the Muslim travel ban. Even if it doesn't stand the test of time, even if it goes away eventually, merely proposing a wall and then salting the wound by saying Mexico should pay for it is bound to get Mexico thinking about looking for some new trade main mama, like, I don't know, uh, China. All of that flies in the face of Texas interest. Anything that would put a damper on trade with Mexico will come straight out of the economy hide of Texas. Forget the physical stupidity. The, the issue of trade alone should be enough to put Texas politicians on a war footing to save this state's economy. But no, they're all terrified if they say one thing that makes Trump mad, he'll sick some Tea Party stiff on them next time they have to stand for election. So how do they defend us? U.S. Senator John Coynan said last week, I want to make sure we know what the consequences would be and how this would work. I know a lot of the major retailers are concerned about this as well. That's what I would call ple the please don't hurt me approach. Please, really, please don't. My own memory of middle school playgrounds, the last places I encountered Trump type bullies, was that the, the please don't hurt me approach usually got me punched in the gut. I may not be remembering this properly. Maybe please don't hurt me was what got me pasted. Anyway, I remember now never ever to say it out loud, even if that's what I'm thinking. Then we have Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who said immediately after Trump ordered construction to begin that he was pleased with the immediate action President Trump has taken to fulfill his promise to secure the border. This week, in his State of the State address, Abbott did not even mention a wall or trade with Mexico, but he did say, this is the session we will ban sanctuary cities. I'm declaring this an emergency item. I would call that approach, if I go kick the dog, can we be friends? Like sanctuary cities are a real problem. All major cities in Texas are sanctuary cities, sanctuary from the rest of Texas. Why do you think we live in them? Next, Abbott will call uh, Trump and tell him he's going to ban bicycles, and uh, various categories of well-known and properly used or consumed a wine. Oh, I know, we have U.S. Senator Ted Cruz to talk about. He says he loves the wall and wants to imprison anybody who climbs over it for five years. But come on, that's just Ted Cruz. The guy doesn't change. His plan for fending off attacks from nutball right-wingers has always been to out-nutball them, something Cruz can do in his sleep. If Trump agreed to five-year prison terms for border crosses, Cruz would amp up his own game to waterboarding. The only thing Ted Cruz never wants to see in his sleep is Ted Cruz getting defeated in an election. Texas House Speaker Joe Strauss probably took a more direct stab at it than some by saying on his Facebook page, the United States and Mexico have a productive economic partnership that is especially good for Texas and San Antonio. The people of our state benefit greatly from trade with Mexico and from our cooperation on issues such as homeland security and counterterrorism. And, and, did you mean to say something, Mr. Speaker? Or were you just practicing for your future career as a substitute teacher? That was funny. It's a wussing out. It's so transparent if Strauss's geography lesson doesn't work, you halfway expect him to say, Mr. President, you know Cruz called you an orange head. He's standing right over there. 
And it's not as if they had don't know better. If any one of them reads an ex example, he needs to look no further. I'm sorry, if any one of them needs an example, he needs to look no further than Republican Congressman Will Hurd, whose district stretches from San Antonio West to El Paso along 800 miles of border with Mexico. Hurd, a former CIA undercover officer, voiced his objections to the wall in an op-ed to for the Washington Post this week. He stated, in fact, building a wall from sea to shining sea would be the most expensive and least effective way to secure the border. Building a wall in the middle of a river or at the top of a mountain would be a waste of taxpayer money. Building a wall through hundreds of miles of desert on the border is useless if you do not have border patrol agents available to respond to challenges to the barrier. The president has said he will ensure that Mexico pays for the construction of a border wall. Mexico is our friend and partner. Our national security depends on working together to ensure the integrity of our southern border. While chasing terrorists as an undercover officer in the CIA, I learned a few life lessons, such as be nice to nice guys and tough with tough guys and make sure your friends trust you and your enemies fear you. That approach is what I call taking it to the man. Heard isn't afraid to tell Trump not merely that his border ideas are misbegotten, but that they are dangerous and potentially extremely destructive. Why would you have to listen, I'm sorry, why would you have to explain that to a president of the United States? Somebody needs to draw him a picture exactly what Heard is doing. Look, I'm going to take this back to middle school. The main panster on the playground usually is not the sharpest pencil in the box. You kind of have to speak a language he can get. That's exactly what Heard is doing, while the rest of them are all too whisked out to say anything because of their Tea Party heebie-jeebies. They are hostage to the ultra-wacko right, therefore so are we. What a situation. So, all of us folks from Texas, we are going to be facing a shitstorm if Donald Trump gets his way with building that wall. Now again, should we have a really good uh, southern border security? Yes. Is building a wall the answer? No. They have things uh, such as uh, ladders, okay? And I saw a video the other day on a 30-foot wall and they have ladders specially constructed to scale all walls like that. And the, there were like four guys uh, that uh, scaled a 30-foot wall in approximately uh, five seconds. They were up on top of the wall, grabbing their ladder, which didn't really weigh much of anything, dropping the ladder down to the other side, and they were down that wall in uh, less than five seconds. So building a wall is not gonna keep these guys out. And then, obviously, there's uh, such a thing as tunneling. So, I mean, how uh, far down are they going to place the footing on that wall? It's not going to be, you know, 20 feet down. And even if it is, all they're going to do is uh, burrow down 25 feet and come under the wall when necessary. No, what they need, actually, um, is uh, high-tech border uh, security and enough officers in order to enforce it. So that calls for uh, electronic uh, surveillance devices, uh, drones, and uh, people, not concrete walls. And yeah, I know that people over the long run are going to cost a lot of money, but at the same time, I, I would love to see a uh, projection on uh, or cost analysis uh, study done on just putting up a wall with nothing else versus uh, using uh, people and drones. Because even when you put up a wall, you're still gonna need people to go after the guys that go over the wall. Anyway, Texans, uh, Donald Trump is going to uh, screw us and he's gonna screw us royally and our elected officials, at least all the guys other than Heard, basically, you know, are staying silent about what's going to happen to us if Trump gets his way. You need to take a look at every last single one of these guys and 
question them about this. And if they don't give you the right answers, then uh, there's always uh, the ballot box in order to make a change.